NoPrepSchool.com presents Caves, an online web course for grades 3 through 5. Part 1. What is a cave? Everyone knows what a cave is, but in order to really understand a cave, you must learn how to describe it, how it formed, and how the spectacular formations inside the cave came to be there. A basic definition of a cave describes it as a natural opening in the ground or the side of a mountain, which extends past the zone of light at the entrance. In some cases, the cave opening is large enough to allow people to enter for exploration or study, while in other cases the opening is very small. The size of the opening may or may not predict the size of the interior. Some very small openings can lead to enormous underground caverns that extend for miles. Caves occur in many different rock types and are formed in several different ways. The study of caves is called speology, and this word comes from the combination of two Greek words, speleon, which means cave, and logos, which means to study. Cave study requires an understanding of geology, hydrology, biology, and archaeology. People who explore caves call themselves spelunkers or cavers. Some cavers think spelunkers are amateurs and refuse to use the term to refer to what they do. Which term do you like better? Just about everyone has seen or heard of a caveman, but did you ever ask yourself why humans wanted to live in caves in the first place? Caves were natural shelters for humans before they were able to build homes to keep them safe and warm. Today, we no longer live in caves, but we do like to visit caves. Cave formations allow for spectacular and beautiful decorations that appeal to our sense of wonder and amazement. The earliest form of human artwork can be found on the walls of caves. This is from the wall of a cave in Argentina. It's called Cave of the Hands. Can you picture these ancient people all painting their hands on that wall? The art dates from between 13,000 and 9,000 years ago. People who visit and explore caves as a hobby are called cavers or spelunkers. Many cavers prefer to visit caves that are outside of the national park system. This makes the experience more challenging and dangerous. The caves inside the national park system have tours for groups of people paved pathways, and have generally been made, quote, safe for exploration. This picture on the left shows a safe walkway in the Carlsbad Cavern Cave System in New Mexico. Compare that with the dangerous ascent this other caver is attempting. Cavers prefer challenge in their exploration and expect to crawl through a squeeze climb the slippery cave walls, or sometimes even dive below the water level to find unseen areas of the cave. Visiting caves both within and outside of the national park system is a very popular pastime, and some of the biggest caves in the United States can get more than half a million visitors each year. Types of caves. There are four main types of caves. Solution caves, lava tube caves, sea caves, and glacier caves. Solution caves are formed by water passing over certain types of rock, such as limestone, marble, or gypsum. This is called percolation. The process of cave formation by water is generally a slow one. As the water moves over the rock, it will dissolve the rock little by little and create twists and turns, small passages, large passages, and even huge underground rooms. Solution caves are the most common type of cave. Lava tube caves are formed by lava flow from a volcano. This cave has a more tunneled or tube appearance and forms when the outer surface of the lava cools and hardens while the interior continues to flow. Eventually, the interior lava will drain out, leaving an empty passage where the lava once was. Lava tube caves form when slow flowing lava along the sides of a channel is so viscous or thick that it actually hardens and eventually forms a roof over the stream of flowing lava in the center of the channel. 
When the pressure inside the volcano is released and the lava stops flowing, it will pour out the end of the channel and leave behind a cave. Lava tube caves form on the flanks of a shield volcano. Shield volcanoes are almost entirely made up of liquid lava flows. It's called a shield volcano because it looks like a warrior's shield lying on the ground. Mauna Loa, a shield volcano on the big island of Hawaii, is the world's largest volcano. Sea caves are formed by the waves of the ocean or even a large lake pounding up against a cliff on the shoreline. The sand and grit in the water acts like a knife that can cut through the stone walls of the shore cliff, and over a long period of time, the cave entrance is formed. Sea caves form due to erosion, which is the wearing away of rock from water. They form in the cliff sides along the shores of large lakes and oceans due to wave action. The scientific name for a sea cave is littoral cave. They can be found in sedimentary, igneous, and metamorphic rock. Since igneous rock is harder, the littoral caves tend to be bigger. Sea caves form when there is a weak spot in the rock, such as a fault. A fault is a crack in the rock. The wave action of the water wears the rock away in these weak spots. Erosion occurs along all coastlines, but when there is a fault, this process occurs quicker. Glacier caves are formed by the movement of a glacier. A glacier is a very large solid body of ice that moves over land, shaping the terrain using enormous pressure. A glacier cave and an ice cave are not the same thing. Ice caves are typically solution or lava caves, which have ice formations. Glacier caves are often formed by water running under the glacier, either from ice melt or because the glacier formed near the ocean. Unlike sea caves, which are formed by wave action and water beating against rock along a coastline, glacier caves usually form due to water running through or underneath them. Some glacier caves can form from the geothermal heat from volcanic vents that lie underneath the ice. Once the water retreats, air moves in and continues the process. Air currents widen the cave through melting in the summer and sublimation in the winter. Sublimation is the process of a solid changing directly into a gas without becoming a liquid first. Since glaciers move and melt, glacial caves can be unstable. Geothermal heat means heat from the earth and comes from volcanoes under the sea or land. Glaciologists are scientists who study glaciers. These caves can give them access to the inside of the glacier. How Caves Form Solution caves form in limestone and other softer rocks from water. Think of a solution cave as a series of pipes under the ground. After a rain, the water will seep into the ground and percolate beneath the surface. Percolate means slow-moving water through soils and rocks. So, the three stages are... Water seeps through cracks in the rock, an underground stream carves into the rock, and then a large cave system develops. The water eventually ends up in an area underground where all the cracks and crevices between the rocks and soil are already filled with water. This is called the water table. The water mixes with carbon dioxide and creates a mild acid that is able to dissolve the limestone to form cavities and passages. The large cave chambers grow when more and more limestone dissolves. The second part of solution cave development happens when the water table is lowered, leaving empty spaces filled with air. This is when the spectacular anatomy is formed by the deposition of calcite, a mineral contained in the limestone. In order to have a complete understanding of how caves form, you need to understand the language of rocks and chemicals. So here are some definitions for you to think about as you go through this section. Gypsum is a common, colorless, white or yellowish mineral used in making plaster. Calcite, a common crystalline form of calcium carbonate. Limestone, a common rock made up of calcium carbonate. 
calcium carbonate, a colorless or white crystalline compound occurring naturally as chalk. Marble is a rock that is mostly made up of limestone. Gypsum is what plaster is made of. It can be found in large veins and layers of rock or in crystal form, like these massive gypsum crystals in the Cave of the Crystals in Mexico. Now you're going to learn about the different secondary cave formations. Speleothems is the general term for these dripstone formations, but each one also has a specific name too. Speleothems, a secondary mineral deposit formed in a cave. Stalactites a type of speleothem that hangs from the ceiling of limestone caves. Column, when a stalactite and a stalagmite grow together to meet in the middle. In stalagmites, they are speleothems that grow upward from the floor. Cave decorations are formed by calcium carbonate, and this process is the exact opposite of the formation of the solution cave. Water under the ground contains carbon dioxide, and this gas can escape from the water. This creates another calcium solution called calcium bicarbonate. The calcium bicarbonate leaves the water and deposits on the rocks. This is how the decorations called dripstone are formed inside the cave. The decorative dripstone features are called speleothems from the Greek spelion for cave and theme for deposit. The most familiar speleothems are stalactites and stalagmites. Stalactites hang down from the ceiling and are formed as drop after drop of water slowly trickles through the cracks in the cave roof. As each drop of water hangs from the ceiling, it loses carbon dioxide and deposits a film of calcite. Soda straw stalactites grow when water flows down a central tube in the stalactite and deposits calcite crystals at the end as it encounters the cave air. Most are fragile and have the diameter of a drop of water. The large cone-shaped stalactites begin as these fragile tubes and then enlarge to cones when enough water accumulates to flow along the outside of the soda straws. Stalagmites grow upward from the floor of the cave as a result of water dripping from overhanging stalactites, which form a stripstone. A column forms when a stalactite and a stalagmite grow until they join. A curtain or drapery formation forms on a slip ceiling when drops of water trickle down it. Over time, a thin sheet of calcite grows downward from the ceiling and hangs in decorative folds like a drape. Sheets of calcite that are deposited on the walls or floor by flowing water are called flowstone. Rimstone dams are raised fence-like deposits of calcite on the cave floor and which form around pools of water. Halactites are curious twisted or spiraling cylinders or needles. They develop when water seeps through the ceiling so slowly that the calcite or gypsum is able to change the direction of the formation. Cave corals are also formed by slowly seeping water and are small clusters of individual knobby structures. The size and depth of many caves in the United States are spectacular. Seven caves have more than 15 miles of passages, and the longest is the Flint Mammoth Cave System in Kentucky at more than 300 miles. The other six caves that have more than 15 miles of passages are Jewel Cave in South Dakota, Oregon Cave in West Virginia, Wind Cave in South Dakota, Cumberland Caverns in Tennessee, Sloan Valley Cave System in Kentucky, and Crevice Cave in Missouri. The deepest cave in the United States is Neff's Canyon in Utah, where the deepest passage sits a stunning 1,189 feet below the entrance. Neff's Cave has been closed to the public for many years due to safety concerns. This cave is controlled by the United States Forest Service. The cave was discovered by two adventurous brothers, John and Jamie Lyon, in 1949. They visited the cave several times exploring, but didn't have the right equipment to reach the bottom of a steep slope on one fateful trip and needed to be rescued. A real-life kids-in-a-cave adventure. Don't do this at home.
The second deepest cave is Carlsbad Caverns in New Mexico. Its lowest point is 1,022 feet below the entrance. The Ellison's cave system in Georgia has a depth of nearly 1,000 feet. The largest cave room is in Carlsbad Caverns, where the big room covers 14 acres. This room is 1,800 feet long and ranges up to 1,100 feet wide at the highest point of the ceiling. And the highest point of the ceiling is 225 feet tall. The size of the big room, the length of the caverns, and the depth probably make Carlsbad the biggest cave in the United States. There are about 17,000 known caves in the United States. They occur in every state except Rhode Island and Louisiana. About 125 caves have been open to the public for study and enjoyment. Of these, 15 are in national parks or monuments, and 30 are in state parks. The remainder are privately owned and operated. Most of these caves are in the Appalachian Mountains, the Ozark Mountains, the Black Hills, and the limestone regions of Kentucky, Tennessee, and Indiana. Exploring newly discovered or unattended caves can be extremely dangerous. If you plan to go cave exploring, you must remember these rules. 1. Always tell someone where you are going and when you can be expected to return. Obtain permission from the owner of the cave for the visit. 2. Respect gates, whether they are in the field or at the cave entrance. 3. Never enter a cave alone. 4. Always carry several sources of light. Do not depend solely on flashlights. 5. Make sure you have proper equipment in good working condition. And 6. Never go beyond your physical and technical capabilities. Caves are natural features and should be protected, but many have been vandalized by careless visitors or damaged by poorly planned commercial development. Some caves have been stripped of speleothems, which took thousands of years to form, and in many places will not form again. It is important to try and save our natural wonders for future generations to enjoy as well. If you go cave exploring, make sure you follow the rules in the cave and do not touch or remove cave formations. Here is a little interesting factoid to leave you with. Scientists think there are lava tube caves on Mars, and if, or when, we Earthlings ever get there, the caves of Mars might be where we build our first habitats, for three reasons. One, caves would provide protection from solar radiation. Mars has no magnetic field like Earth does. This is what protects us from the damaging ultraviolet light of the sun, so living in caves would put us in the shade. Two, Mars also has crazy wind and dust storms, so being in a cave when those things whip through isn't a bad idea. And number three, in addition to all that, how cool would it be to study Mars from the inside? And how ironic. We humans started out in caves, and tens of thousands of years later, we might end up in them on another planet. Maybe we'll paint handprints on Mars too. Mm -hmm.